getting back on track. In times that call for dead stewardship of the economy, this year's budget is a starting point. So, in times that call for debt stewardship, so it means that um, in that um, in these times where um, where we have a lot of debt to cover, especially because of the recent pandemic. Uh, so, because of that debt, um, starting starting a new budget this year um, is a must. But it, it it but but it is also very hard to do so because we also have we also have the debts of the last year to cover, and we now and we now, and now we need to make a new budget plan. Um, Finance Minister. Finance Minister Nimala Sitaraman made a brave effort to make good use of the lessons learned from the unprecedented global health crisis and ensuring economic setback to put lives and livelihoods back on track. So, India's Finance Minister, as we all know, um, is Nimala Sitaraman, and she made a very brave att- uh, attempt, m- made uh, a very brave effort to make good use of the lessons um, that she learned from the unprecedented global. So. Um, the pandemic which we had, uh, the pandemic which we have now, which we partially have now, and also the pandemic which we had in the last year, so that pandemic which was caused by the COVID, um, that pandemic which was caused by the coronavirus, it was, uh, it was unprecedented. It means um, we never saw something like that in our um, in our history, and um, after being after being severely damaged and hit, um, and after being severely damaged and hit by that type of pandemic our economy is completely spoiled but um, but but 2021 is a new year and we need to make budget plans for this year and nimala sita raman she made a very brave attempt um, what she did is that she decided to learn from the crisis or the or the problem of the pandemic um, um, she decided to she decided to learn new lessons and new methods um, and new strategies from the problem there is greater spending on healthcare and some fiscal push to undergrade the struggling demand in the pandemic hit economy. So there is greater spending on healthcare. So uh, she decided to spend most of the money this year on the healthcare because, um, as it, as I told, she uh, she decided that loan. She decided to learn from the crisis. Um, um, she de- she decided to learn from the crisis that we faced last year. So um, as you all know, the crisis is about healthcare. So de- so um, she decided to uh, spend more money on on healthcare this year. And some fiscal push to undergrade the staggering, um, the staggering demand in the pandemic hit economy. But um, but this is no trans but this is no transformative budget that lives up to the heightened expectations of a weary population waiting for manna from the government. So um, as we all know, India has the second um, India has the world's second largest population, um, and 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 India uh, with such a huge population uh, um, to. Uh, to maintain everything about healthcare, um, just spending more money in healthcare is not sufficient. We need to do much more than that. A lot more could have been done to address. Uh, a lot more have been done to address the chronic under um, underinvestment in India's public health infrastructure by appreciably raising expenditure. So the problem the problem in India is that uh, for every passing year. Um, the um, the prices and the cost of the um, of the rooms in the hospitals uh, or the um, or the cost of the medication or the treatment or the appointments of doctors um, uh, the cost of those will be rising but the infrastructure of the hospitals or the medical or the medical or the medical infrastructures or buildings of any type they won't um, they won't be getting improved so the uh, so that is the main concern in india there won't be any chronic underinvestment chronic under co- chronic underinvestment uh, means investing in the buildings uh, to, ma- to make them strong for a long period of time the union budget the union budget for 2021 to 2022 presented to parliament on monday instead reveals an estimated health outlay of 74602 crores almost 10 th- almost 10% Lower than the revised estimate of eighty-two thousand of eighty-two thousand four hundred and forty-five crore rupees earmarked for health spending in the current fiscal year. So, um, the the union the union budget plan um, of the of the of this year um, of this of this of the current year from two thousand twenty-one to two thousand twenty-two. Uh, it was estimated. It was actually estimated to be eighty-two. Eighty-two. Uh, it was actually estimated to be uh, uh, approximately 82, 82.5 thousand um, thousand crores. Um, but the real value, it was it was uh, it, it was ten percent less than that. 
because uh, because it was seventy four point six thousand crore rupees. The the minister, however, has claimed a one thirty seven percent increase in the budgetary outlay on health on health and well being by including an by including a one time expenditure of thirty five thousand crore rupees set aside for the COVID nineteen vac vaccination program. Sixty thousand and thirty crore rupees budgeted for the Department of Drinking Water and Sanitation, as well as the finance, uh, as well as the Finance Commission's grants for both water and sanitation and health outlay to almost 50, to almost fifty thousand crore rupees. So, uh, not only actually not only seventy four thousand six, um, not only seventy four point seventy four point six crore rupees. Um, all um, those were not only the amount of money. Um, that were actually uh, wholly spent on the on the healthcare department. Aside from that, um, thirty five thousand crore rupees have been set aside for the COVID nineteen vaccination distribution program, and sixty thousand and sixty thousand crore rupees um, that money have been set aside for drinking water and sanitation purpose, and other fifty thousand and and another fifty thousand crore rupees. Um, were set for um um were set um sorry actually the total actually do the total now after uh, um of of for both water and sanitation and health totaling so um including all of these three the total price is fifty is fifty thousand crore rupees when it is in when it is an in inarguable fact that the availability of vaccines ensuring universal access. To safe drinking water and proper sanitation and adequate nutrition, all are key in determining a population's well-being, um, abiding abiding trust on creating and main, and ma and maintaining a sizably more extensive public healthcare infrastructure needed substantially higher outlay on the, on the stand alone on the stand alone head. So uh, it is no doubt that all these things, um, sanitation, um, good nutrition. Um, safe water drinking and the things like that. Um, all of these things are very um, all of all of them contribute a major part to the um, to the well-being of a country. In fact, the economic survey had elo had eloquently made the case for providing a massive boost to health to health spend to health spending, which a reason would serve as a direct means. To raising overall economic output by reducing the economic burden of illness, so the economic survey, as um, as we read before, um, the Indian government it had done an economic survey and and it has analysed uh, many economical data, and it, even it even uh, even it is um, even it is giving more more emphasis or it is more prioritize it is more prioritizing to spend more money to spend more and more money on the healthcare department. Because it's um, and and it says that and it says the reason is that even um, suppose that we, uh, suppose that we we spent only uh, we spent only uh, only a little amount of money or a um, or an average amount of money on the healthcare department and suddenly we get an uh, we get another virus or another problem like the coronavirus and because of that um, even the year two thousand twenty one um, will become same as the year two thousand twenty and because of that we'll again go into debts so we don't want that. So what we are doing is that um, we are ignoring or we are neglecting the um, we are um, we are decide uh, we are deciding to avoid that problem by spending more money on on healthcare department right now. To her credit, the minister did announce the government intends to introduce a new centrally sponsored scheme, um, PM PM Atman Atman Atmanirbhar Swast Bharat Yojana to develop primary, secondary. Um, and territory ca and territory care capacities over the next six years at an estimated cost of sixty four thousand of sixty four thousand one hundred and eighty crore rupees. So actually, um, our finance minister, Nimala Sitharaman, he um, she had a new plan or a new scheme, um, and and that scheme or plan was known as PM Atmanirbhar Swast Bharat Yojana, and it it same was to develop um it same was to develop primary, secondary, and territory care capacities. Um, all of these will be running for the next six years. And the cost for all and the estimated cost of all of this will um will be sixty four sixty four thousand one hundred eighty crore rupees. How exactly this scheme pans uh, pans out in terms of strengthening 
and beleaguered um, and beleaguered public health infrastructure in the remote and far flung corners would well determine how prepared india is for the next unforeseen health emergency so if this plan really works out then it means that um um we uh, we, uh, we really were ready for the next uh, for the for the next big problem like coronavirus so um right now we should hope that um, this scheme or the plan plan should be working a sizable fiscal have gone a long way in completing the recovery um uh, so a sizable fiscal have gone a long way in completing the recovery so um india's economy it's still recovering uh, it, it's in a very good state but it's not as good as it would be um, it was in the past before the pandemic so we are still recovering so, um we are slowly but uh, slowly but surely while the revised estimates for the current financial year project a fiscal deficit of 9.5% of the gdp on account of expenditure surging to 34.50 lakh crore rupees the minister has opted for a mere 33 33000 crore rupees increase in the overall expenditure outlay in a budget estimates for the next fiscal so um the last year's um, the last year's fiscal deficit was 9.5% of our gdp that's actually a huge amount of gd uh, of deficit um and the minister has opted for a mere 33000 crore rupees increase in the overall expenditure outlay for the next fiscal year um uh, um uh, our finance minister nimala sitaraman she decided to increase the next year's budget um by that by 33000 crore rupees um over over the this year um over over the over the financial budget of this year here again she has pointed out to the 5.54 lakh crore set aside for capital expenditure to contain a 34.5 increase in outlay uh, um, over the current over the current year's budget estimate and uh, the expenditure that will be spent on the capital or the capital or the capital expenditure only that will be increased by 34.5% of the or uh, of the overall 100% uh, or of the overall 100% increase of the 33000 crore rupees increase far from being an expansory uh, from an expansory budget mrs sitaraman has opted to contain overall spending so as to rein in the fiscal deficit to 6.8% in the coming fiscal itself so decided, so um, she was very she was very um, she was very determined to reduce the fiscal deficit of any next year um, to 6.5% the country cannot afford a premature um, the country cannot afford um, a premature scaled down of fiscal support at a time of rising inequality so yes um, as we read in as we read in the recent editorial um, essay editorial um, the the editorial itself um, it was the topic of um, um, the, um, the the income dis- the income disparity because of the pandemic so when we are when we are in such a um, such a bad time which um, we really should not be having a, um, such long amounts of fiscal deficit like 9.5% and 6.5% stabbed as the government is for funds in the wake of this year's economy economic contraction denting um, denting its denting its revenue receipts the budget does make bold to set out a few avenues for the resource for the resource mobilization St- strapped as the government is for funds now the go- now the government of india it is uh, it's 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 trying its best it's trying really hard to get the funds which it needs to 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 uh, to revive the to, to revive the economy of this year the budget does make bold to set out a few avenues for resource mobilization but this year's new economic scheme or plan it um, it it promises us one thing um, it it can help us go it can help us get more money with the minister announcing her resolve to complete the pandemic delayed strategic stake sale um, in his in the several state owned companies in the coming fiscal the budget has accounted for 1.75 lakh crore in, in capital receipts from the this investment so with the minister announcing announcing her resolve so uh, so nimula sitaraman our, our, our financial minister um, while she was announcing uh, her final plan for uh, 
um, her, her, her final plan for this year's budget to complete the pandemic to complete the pandemic gilead strategic stake sale so um uh, to, to cover all the losses of the pandemic um, which we experienced which we experienced in the la- in the year of 2020 so to cover all those losses um, mr nimula um, nimula sitaraman she is um, she is uh, introducing a new scheme or plan the budget the budget has accounted for 1.75 lakh crore rupees in capital receipts so um, the budget has 1.75 lakh crore uh, uh, lakh crore rupees in capital receipts from the, from this investment she also proposes to privatize two more public sector banks and a general insurer in 2021 to 2022 um, has has committed to ensuring the that the necessary the necessary legislative ap- amendments to enable the lics ipo or are under use in the um, in the current session of the parliament uh, so she also proposes she also says to privatize two more public sectors uh, two more sub, two more public sector banks so um, she is saying that uh, in uh, as a part of her plan um, two of the two of the two of the banks which are um, two of the banks which are actually public banks um this year both of them will be shifted to private banks and a general insurer in 2021 to 2022 has committed to ensuring that that the necessary of legis- of legislative uh, amendments to enable lics ipo are introduced in the current years of parliament so to do so to convert those um, to convert those two public banks into private banks we, um, some some amendments in the constitution or in, or in the laws some uh, some some amendments in the laws uh, should be made the budget also throw the, um, the budget also throws open op- also throws um, also also throws open the doors for increased fdi in insurance um, the foreign ownership limit would be raised to 74% after amendments to in, uh, to the insurance act so even the fdi Uh, so according to, according to the new scheme or new plan even the fdi fdi of our country will raise fdi means foreign direct investment um, it basically means that other country in investing in investing in a, in a, um, in our country so even the, even fdi even it, it would increase by 74% if these amendments are made and if those public banks are converted to private um, are converted to private banks ninth um, still still it remains to be seen seen how eager overseas insurance insurers may be to raise their stakes given the government's intention to make its proposal politically acceptable by including safeguards such as mandating uh, that a majority of the of the board positions and key management personnel be restricted to the to the resident indians and requiring the companies to set aside a specified percentage of profits of of profits um, as general reserve also on the block for possible sale or lease through concessions um, are state owned undertakings land as land assets um, that the government intends to monetize also a- a- another thing is that also on the block for possible sake for possible sa- for possible sale or lease um, the government uh, the government it is also hoping that the foreign investors will take uh, will take a property or a, um, or some land of india of of, of our country for uh, lease or sale so um, through concessions that are state owned undertakings and they will also be getting concessions so they will not be getting the uh, they will not be getting the original price but they will be uh, but they will be getting some con- uh, they will be getting some concessions um, um, to encourage them more to buy our uh, lands or properties our state owned undertakings and land assets that the government intends to monetize in the in finding the cap- in the finding the capital for its nation infrastructure pipeline the budget proposes an asset monetization pipeline that would include highways airports and ports um so we also need some money to, um, we also need we also need some money uh, for the pipeline project which uh, um, which the indian government is looking forward to so even uh, so we need funds for that too and that pipeline project it um, it includes highways it um, it it includes pipelines for highways um, highways airports and uh, and some ports the aggressive stance on privatization on privatization notwithstanding the government is still likely 
to face an uphill task in achieving its ambitious disinvestment disinvestment goal given that the private investment is still anemic so um so yes we are actually um, here we are, we are actually switching to private investment from the public investment and uh, we can't trust private investment term um, that more because um, but because of the pandemic um, um, most of the private companies um, none of them will actually be uh, none of them will actually be um, willing to um, willing to invest in those properties owned by the government because um, by, by owning some similar properties uh, in the pandemic all the private owners or the or the um, or the corp um, or the uh, or the private corporations all of them have been severely hit by the pandemic so uh, um, so the other things so the see, so the other things uh, that um, the chance of the private um, the chance of the private owners buying uh, purchasing or buying these or at least taking this lands for lease um, is not probable ms sitaram ms sitaraman has also embarked on creating a bad bank for dealing with the pile of stress and bad and bad bank loans so she is also creating a part of uh, of the plan or um, or a section of the uh, plan which is known as bad bank and this sector it deals with the the pile of stress and bad uh, bad bank loans uh, so it basically um, deals with the um, the debts problem and the loans problem of our country the budget process establishing both an asset reconstruction company and an asset management company that would that would consolidate and take over existing stress debt and then help dispose of the assets of the assets so the new budget plan it has uh, it has to, it has two it has uh, two new things in it and they are uh, asset reconstruction company and an asset management company so these two asset management company and asset um and um and asset reconstruction company that would consolidate and take out the existing stress debt so hopefully these two new um these two um these two uh, these two new amendments will be um, um will be de- will be uh, decreasing the debt of india that we have right now if it it is these it is these plans to privatize two state run banks and also undertake a clean up of the stressed assets that have prompted the minister to set aside just 20000 crore rupees to recapitalize the remaining public banks so um, we should we should really great um, we should really hope strongly that um, these this these new two amendments um, will will be changing the two will be changing the two um, to to public banks into private banks Uh, because nimala sita raman she is uh, hardly trusting these two uh, these two amendments to do so 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 because of that reason she has only set aside 20000 crore rupees for the privatization of the remaining banks ultimately though given its effort to mobilize resources without tweaking direct taxes at a time when several states are headed to polls the government has had little option but to tap on the market for debt so ultimately though given its effort to mobilize resources so um, after after all of this discussion of all of the new amendments which um, uh, which have been made in this um, which have been made in this year's plan after all of those given its effort given its effort maintain a um, f- effort to mobilize resources without making the direct taxes at a time and several states are headed to polls um so we should also uh, so um, basically it says that um indian government it should be uh, it should be very careful to not make more debts because we, um, the goal of this year, the goal of this year sir the goal of the goal of the this year's fiscal uh, plan um is um, is to decrease the debt that um, that we have and also and also manage the healthcare issues with the budget po- with the budget positing a gross market borrowing of 12 lakh crore the government will end up getting 36 paise of every rupee it nets from borrowings and other liabilities in 80% increase so with a budget positing a gross market borrowing of 12 uh, of 12 lakh crore rupees the government will end up getting 36 paise of every rupee it nets from borrowings and liabilities um 
so if the so if the government for the government of india if it currently follows this plan um 36 uh, f- uh, for every boring and for every liability that we have we'll get th- we'll get the that six paise of every rupee so see uh, so when if you are spending every rupee ha- continuing 100 paise will be getting 36 paise from every liability and uh, uh, from every liability and borrowing given these challenges the budget can only be the starting point for a year that calls for debt stewardship of the economy so to manage the debt to decrease the debt totally um, uh, the the new fiscal budget plan is just one step we need to go um, we need to take many steps to recover our economy totally thank you